Hey folks, how's it going? Today we have a very great tool that we're gonna make that only takes about two lines of GLSL. So what is this magical tool that I think is going to be helpful for a lot of people? Well, what it allows you to do is create clipping planes and actually clip any kind of point cloud data source coming in. So this could be useful if you're using something like maybe point cloud files. This could also be used even in real time because it's pretty high performing as a shader. So you could use this on things like ouster sensors or any other kind of LiDAR device that you may be using, maybe a real sense. You could use this with Connect Azure or even Connect 2 with the point cloud data coming in there. And all of this really comes down to about two lines of Python. So just to get a quick preview of this, you can see here I have a bunch of parameters on my GLSL shader here. And what they give me are very easy to control clipping planes. And you can see they very easily and quickly clip out any of the points inside of this model here. So how are we gonna make this? Let's go ahead and delete this and start from scratch. So I'm gonna start by making a point file in top. And this is just going to act as our source for this example. But like I said, you could probably plug in connect Azure data. You could plug in LIDAR data, basically any kind of data where the X, Y, Z positions of your point cloud are represented by the R, G and B channels in your data texture. So in this case, if you haven't worked with point clouds, this might be a fun little exercise and you might even pick up a few fun tricks here. So one of the really great things I love about touch designer and working with point clouds is being able to switch my viewers on the tops to actually represent that point cloud. Now this is super easy. All we have to do is click the little plus button in the bottom right corner, right click inside of the viewer and hit view as points. Now you could also use the keyboard hot key V and what you're gonna see is now we have almost what looks exactly like a SOP viewer that is representing for us the data in that texture in a 3D format. So don't be confused, this is still very much a top. It didn't become magically a SOP and these points that we see inside of it are purely for visualization. So the output of this, if we put a null after it, is still in fact just an RGB texture. So I have my point file in, I'm going to switch the sample file from a sphere over to the banana sample. And we can see now I have a point cloud of a 3D banana. And I'm gonna go ahead and make my GLSL top. Now I'm gonna plug in my point file in to my GLSL top. And before we dive into the actual shader, because it's actually gonna be very quick and easy to put together, I'm gonna to create my controls or handles for this. So I'll go to the vectors page of the GLSL shader. And uniforms, if you've never worked with GLSL, this is also a great way to kind of test the waters and see how useful GLSL can be without actually learning too much of the, you know, deep coding or algorithmic stuff. So a uniform is basically a value that we're passing from the outside world into our shader. So I'm going to make three sets of uniforms and I can do this by clicking the plus button. And now I have three uniforms and each one is going to represent the positive and minus clipping planes of each of the axes. So what I'll do is I'll give each one of these a different name. And common thing to do in GLSL is put an un uh, lowercase u at the beginning of any uniforms, because that way you know inside of your code, oh, that's a uniform coming from outside. So I'll go ahead and start with u, and then I'll call this maybe x clip. And my second uniform will be u y clip. And my final one will be u Z clip. Now you can name these whatever you like, just when we get to the next step of defining these inside of the shader. If you did change the names of these, make sure you update your code accordingly. Now I know that each of my clipping ends of the spectrum are only going to have one value for the positive edge and one value for the negative edge. So in this case, I can go ahead and set up a negative one value and a positive one value on each of my axes. And I can zero out any extra data because we don't need all of the data inside of each uniform. Great. So now we're essentially ready to dive into our shader. So I'll go ahead and right click and edit this shader. And one of the really great things is that it comes with just enough code sample in here that 
even if you didn't know all of the stuff in GLSL by memory, you could piece something together like this really quick. So for example, we have a quick little line that helps us get a uniform at the beginning. So what I can do is delete this comment of the example pixel shader and get rid of the comment markings here. And the only thing I'm gonna change about this uniform definition is this example gives us a float, but I know I need a vec2, which is a vector with two different values in it. So all I have to do is change float to vec2. And then instead of using the name example uniform, I just have to use the exact same name that I used when I defined that uniform in the parameters. So in this case, I would say u x clip. And like I mentioned earlier, if you did wanna name these something different, just to make sure that the names between the uniforms in your code and the names in the uniforms in the parameter match up, otherwise it won't work. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this line. So that way I can finish defining my Y clip and my Z clip. Great, now we already have our output set up, so we don't actually need that. Right now we can see on line 10, there's a line vec4 color equals vec4 1.0. And all that does is it's creating a new four part vector. And in GLSL, a lot of times you'll see vec4s because they represent pixels as well. RGBA equals four channels. That's why a vec4. And in this case, it's creating a new variable and setting it to 1.0 on all of the channels. And that's why by default, we see white inside of that viewer. So what we could do here is delete that line because luckily we have a sample, a little example right above it of how to sample an input. So I can remove the comment markings here. And what we're gonna see is vec4 color equals texture, std2d inputs zero, VUVST, you almost don't even need to know too much about what's going on here. All we need to know is that the color is now gonna have the RGBA channels of our input. And we're gonna type in our magical two lines of code that are gonna help us make all of this clipping magic happen. Now, if we think about this purely from a pixel perspective or even a 3D perspective, what we're trying to do here is very simple logically. We just want to check every single pixel if it is greater than a certain value, which I guess I should go in this direction, if it's greater than a certain value, we want to discard it. And on the negative side of things, if the pixel value is less than a specific value, we also want to discard it. And we just want to do that on each of the axes on each channel. So this can really be summarized in a single line if statement. So I'm going to start an if statement here. And if you've never done any GLSL code before, if statement functions very similarly to how it would in Python, except you need a few extra sets of brackets here and there. So the first set is going to be the brackets in which I'm gonna put my condition. And then I need a set of squiggly brackets after it where I'm gonna put the code for what to do if I'm outside of my ranges. And in this case, I know that if I'm outside of my ranges, what I want to do is, is zero out the pixel. I want it to be fully black, on RGBA to basically delete that point from the point cloud. So I know what I could do is say color equals vec4 0.0. And that'll look familiar because it'll look like the sample code that we had before that was setting the pixels to all white. So essentially if our point in the point cloud falls outside of the ranges that we're gonna check for, basically just delete that point. So now comes the magic. Here is where we're gonna do our conditional statement. Now, if you think about this, we essentially have on the first set of values inside of our uniforms is going to be all the negative side of things. And the second set of values is gonna be our positive side of our axes. So what we can always do is say, if the current pixel value is less than the first value of our uniforms, get rid of it. If it's greater than the second set of values, also get rid of it. Now, an easy way to even think about this, especially if you're just getting into programming, is tackling each and every single one of them separately. So what I could do is say, if my color, which in this case is all of the point cloud data coming in, dot r. Now, what the dot r here does is allows us to go into that color texture, which is gonna be RGBA values, and only grab the red channel, which in this case, red is going to be our x-axis. 
So now I'm saying if the value on my x axis, and just like we said, is less than, now how do we get this value here? Well, very easy. We've defined our uniform. So we can say u x clip dot x. So essentially now we're saying if the value of my x position on my data texture coming in is less than, which it basically means beyond the first value that I've created in this uniform, discard it. So we could even just save this and test just this one piece in isolation. So I'll go ahead and save it. Very similarly on my GLSL, what I'm going to do is click the plus button in the bottom, right click and hit view as points. And what I can do is even just start to move this value towards the positive and see if it's actually clipping. And we can see successfully just with that very, very, very quick one line, we now have one of our clicking, clipping planes activated. So now all we have to do is really copy and paste the exact same thing and just switch which sets of data we're comparing. So we already have one set of values being compared. Now, one way to do this is you could create an if, else if, you know, if you're familiar with Python, it's like if elif. But the nice thing is we can just do all of our checks at one time. So what I'm going to do is say, if the color of my red channel is less than uxclip.x, or if this condition is also true, or if this condition is also true, or if this condition is also true. And inside of the GLSL syntax, the way we do or is by putting two straight lines. Now, if you're not familiar with this key, it is on most keyboards, the shift plus the backslash you see just above your enter. So I want to go ahead and put two of those back to back. And now I can set another condition. So I can do both of my X axis back to back, then move to my Y axis. So I could say if my color dot R is now greater than the second value that I have, so I'll say is greater than U X clip dot Y, also throw it out. So I can save that, do a quick little test. And see, now I have both my X axis planes clipping correctly. Now, I don't even have to be a very good programmer to know that I can basically just take this, copy and paste it three times and just switch the R's and the variable names and get the rest of my functionality done. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, another or copy the last one here. So now remember, first I'm going to do if my color dot G, so now we're doing our Y axis planes is less than, then I also have to update because we're not checking UX clip. Now we're checking UY clip dot X. And then I'll go ahead and just copy and paste that again, making sure that there is the two line or symbol in between each of my conditions. So then we want to check color green to see if it's greater than yuclip.y, another or, and then we can say, now let's do the same thing for our two blue channels, which are going to represent the Z axis. So in this case, I know that these are the last two sets here. So color.g has to become color.b. And then instead of checking uy clip, I'm going to check uz clip. Now I can go ahead and save this and test it. So we know our X clip is working. Let's see if our Y clip works here. Once we get into that correct range, we can see the bottom side is working. The top clipping is working. And then we can do a final check on our Z axis here. Looks like that is clipping correctly and on the positive side of things. It is also clipping correctly. So again, if you've never worked in GLSL, don't worry. You know, review this. It's a very simple thing that we're doing here. We basically are defining three uniforms to get the values from our touch designer patch into the shader. Inside of that, our first line here just does a really quick sample of the incoming color data. Then we have a simple if statement to check if that current pixels position on each one of the axis is outside of the two kind of planes I've set up there. And if any of these cases are true, 
then I know that I need to discard this pixel and turn it into a fully black pixel. And then we're just using the basic output that you're gonna see on every shader inside a touch designer. So that's really all there is to it. And I think this is a really easy way for folks to get into GLSL because I find that far too many people don't appreciate how little GLSL it takes to make very useful tools like this. I mean, even if you've never coded before, you could probably make your way through this in about 10 minutes, figure it out and customize it to your needs. And I think it's also gonna be really useful as more and more devices start to support real-time point clouds. Like we're talking about Kinect sensors, ousters, and any of the other kind of LiDAR sensors out there. So hopefully this is helpful for you and we'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.